Hello, everyone. We are ready for a CCO student webinar. It's number 98. Great topic that's going to be very beneficial for you as you are studying um, CPT codes specifically. We're going to be talking about wound debridement, how we code it. But first, we need to understand what wound debridement is. To be able to code and translate to the highest specificity, it's important that we go back to the basics a little bit. So what is wound debridement? It's removing the non-viable tissue. Whenever you have a wound, there's usually tissue along the edges, not just along the edges, that doesn't survive. There's, there is no more a blood supply usually, it's damaged. It can be a little bit or a lot. And think about it, even if you hurt your finger, you know, and the skin starts to peel away a little bit as it's healing, that's, that's you know, ultimately uh, death of that tissue. And um, the same thing happens when you get a blister, you know, and that, that tissue that is over the the liquid of the blister that's not viable tissue it's not going to survive it doesn't look uh, necrotic but um, it is going to dry up and you're going to remove it so it's non-viable tissue uh, it can um, happen when there's a foreign matter involved uh, debris anything that needs to be taken away from the wound to allow for healing. We want to promote healing. Now, uh, what is the bullet points that you need to understand about uh, the process? It is uh, preventing infection. That's probably the number one goal. When you have an open wound, uh, that is ex that's the inside of the body that's supposed to be uh, secure and uh, like uh, homeostasis is what I always think of. You know, everything under the skin is uh, not meant to be exposed to the outside world. And when it is, it opens you up to infection. Promoting granulation and tissue growth. Granulation is a fancy way of saying that the tissue starts to knit back together and facilitates good wound closure. Uh, you can have complications if a wound is not debrided and kept clean. Uh, uh, when the wound starts to granulate and knit itself back together, uh, if those edges aren't precise, then you can have gnarly looking scars. You can have complications because of the scar tissue uh, and it can compromise other surrounding tissue that if it's cleaned up and uh, the edges are kept neat and viable, then uh, the closure will be smooth. Those are things that you need to understand about the reason why wound debridement is done. Now, there's many types of wound debridement. Uh, the first type we'll be talking about is surgical. And to understand surgical wound debridement, it is when you're going to use surgical instrument, instruments to physically remove that dead tissue. Uh, you're going to almost always have this done in an operating suite uh, under sterile conditions. That means that anesthesia will be involved. And when you look at the codes for surgical debridement, these are going to be under surgical procedure uh, type codes. Now, there's rules in CPT that surround this. We'll get to that in a minute. But the example that I showed you in this picture if this was a wound that uh, a person had, uh, the fact that that is a straight line and they've pulled that wound together with the staples, if it was uh, uh, the original wound would not have been that way. You know, it, it would have uh, needed to be cleaned up, debrided, and the outside uh, uh, tissue uh you know, when they go to approximate that, they, they cut that away and pull it together smooth, and then they do a closure. Uh, again, uh, if this heals nicely, that's the end of it. But if an infection were to 
uh, become involved here and that were to open up and you notice that one little staple has come undone now at this point this wound is is pretty healed you know we're we're probably not they're not concerned about that um little staple coming out about this point but let's say that it isn't yet and a staple comes loose or you start having problems and that gapes open and then infection can get involved and if that tissue starts to die they have to go and cut around that pull that back together and they might do that in the operating suite um, if it's something first of all pain being involved, but also to be able to say, we don't know how deep that goes. We're going to have to do some exploring. You know, you can't just do that in a regular office setting. They're going to have to use anesthesia. They're also going to need to um, uh, possibly cut away tissue and get around there and dig, dig around to, to say it uh, nicely. Uh, sharp debridement is when you're going to use scalpel, scissors, anything sharp actually, uh, you're going to remove the necrotic tissue. And when you look at the CPT codes for that, you're going to be looking at wound care CPT codes. Uh, uh, again, that doesn't mean that you're going to the operating suite. Um, however, they will try to do that in a sterile environment. And they're cleaning up and getting rid of, of debris as well as uh, non-viable tissue. We go on to mechanical debridement. This is when you're using specialized equipment. You want to remove dead tissue, but you're also scraping, uh, scrubbing, and uh, sometimes they even put you in whirlpool therapy to uh, flush out, uh, let the water uh, flush out debris and get rid and slough off the dead tissue. Uh, a great example I think of is uh, when I got to be a part of this is one time when I was working in the ER and it was in the summer and um, uh, a person had walked across uh, asphalt barefoot and it was so hot that it had burnt the bottom of their bare feet, but the asphalt had melted on their feet. So when they came in, not only were they not able to walk, but um, that asphalt had stuck to their feet. So it had to be debrided. So they gave a topical numbing solution and um, a nurse and I sat there with those uh, betadine scrub brushes. You know, you open them up and there was a sponge on one side and these soft little bristle brushes. They usually use them now to scrub in um, this is the one of the steps to scrub in. And we just sat there and scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed the bottom of the feet. That is actually mechanical debridement. We were trying to get the asphalt and uh, ground debris away so that the provider could look and see how intense or, or what depth the burns on the feet were. Uh, and it took a long time. <laughs> <laughs> to do that. So again, specialized equipment, it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't necessarily have to be really fancy equipment. It could be just that betadine scrub, debriding and cleaning. Uh, these are absolutely less invasive types of debridement, uh, less severe cases. Again, um, this person, we knew that there was a, a burning of the feet, but they didn't think that it was more than first degree burns, honestly, uh, is what they were thinking. However, uh, you know, it, they were uncomfortable and um, couldn't walk because of that stuck to the feet. And, and the longer that hot asphalt stayed on there, uh, more problematic it was and could cause more burns. With mechanical debridement, there uh, are CPT codes and it's going to be related to the equipment or the technique that's used for the debridement. So there's specific whirlpool codes that you are going to be working in. Another uh, type of debridement that doesn't get talked about, and you may not be even aware that this happens, is called enzymatic. Uh, what they do is they have a topical enzyme that's used and that breaks down that necrotic tissue. What's so unique about this is that they can be very selective of where they put it. So if you have viable tissue and you have necrotic tissue really close to each other, they can place it in specific areas so that it just breaks down the necrotic tissue and keeps the healthy viable tissue strong. Uh, again. 
the more that you work with different types of wounds, uh, you you're trying to protect um, good tissue and and uh, treat the the uh, injured tissue. And depending on where the wound is, it can get very complicated. But um, this particular one was pretty fascinating. And I want you to know that at the bottom of the slide deck, there is a uh, bookmark for all of you guys and the resources to go out and look at these different case studies uh, that I got the pictures from. And uh, some of them are pretty fascinating. And I think that that would be a good idea for you to do as you understand the process of wound care. And most of the time, these are usually uh, very uh, intense, uh, unique scenarios that these papers get written on. And uh, so uh, it, the way that you read them is exactly how the documentation that you're going to be exposed to is written. So it's a good practice for you to jump out and read these studies and uh, familiarize yourself with the verbiage and the terminology. When you are uh, looking at the CPT codes for enzymatic type debridement, it's going to be uh, application of wound care agents. That's the area that the CPT codes will be found. We're also going to be talking about the coding in uh, a moment, but I want to take a break real quick and let you know that our um, student webinars are exclusive to the CCO student. Uh, we appreciate that um, you have picked us to educate you. But if you want more information and want access to uh, some of our exclusive content, you can actually do that by getting uh, uh, complete videos, slides, transcripts, discussions at the CCO Club. Uh, you can go to cco.us forward slash club if uh, you're not already uh, a member of that. I would appreciate it, though, if it is something that you are a member of or you think that you might be interested in joining the club, share that with your peers and colleagues. Let them know that we're out there and uh, give them an opportunity to test the waters with us and see if our type of education resonates with them as well as you.